everybody. This show has been created to inspire you to take action. All about celebrating and reframing what success looks like. To be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And we have incredible speakers for you tonight. Hello, 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 and welcome to another season of the Future Female Show. I'm Susanna Kennedy, and this is my amazing co-host, Lauren Dallas. Hello, everyone, and welcome. As you know, by this point, the Future Female Show is all about celebrating and reframing what success looks like by interviewing and showcasing women from all different industries and walks of life. Susanna and I are very excited. As you can see, we're in studio together today to record this session on how to grow a successful online podcast coming for us right at the end of season one of the future female show and leading now into season two which yes. we're very excited about it's super exciting and we learned so much in season one but one of the things that i think is most important is we learned what we wanted to get out of the podcast and how it would fit into our lives and i think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs don't think about is mm -hmm. first of all let's start with why we created the podcast but how how do you then fit that into your life and make it really, really effective for not only you, but also your entire audience? So I think, should we chat about why we started the podcast in the first place? Absolutely. <laughs> so I think, I think it's interesting that you've circled back around to how it fits into our life, because I would say that's not where we started. No, not no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> the why we started with was really like our, our aligned and integrated purposes of uplifting women, supporting them to build more successful and sustainable businesses. And I think also debunking a lot of what the narrative is around mm. success that's out there and showing women that they can make their own choices and that success for one person doesn't equate to what success looks like for someone else. So I think it definitely started from that purpose lens, if I can say. A hundred percent. And that's why it was interesting for me that we ended the season kind of going, okay, we're both so aligned on purpose because I think that's something that's always brought us together is we've we've always wanted to empower people. We've always truly understood that success is a definition that you write for yourself as um, as a human being, whether you're a man or a woman, um, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, success, your version of success is very, very personal. Um, and how do we create content that really supports all the different variations of success and what you want to create with your life. And one thing that came up for us so many times is zone of genius, right? Absolutely. How do we help women get into their zone of genius so that they can not just survive, but truly, truly thrive, which is something we, we really want for everybody. But towards the end of the season, we were like, oh, wow, so many things worked so well. Um, what could we have done better, first yeah. of all? How can we be more effective for season two? And um, how can we make it more effective, not only for our audience, but also for us? And so I think that's how the circle kind of mm. came back. And uh, one of the things that I know really shifted for us from a mindset perspective is on creating the actual podcast is the definition of a podcast, yeah. right? Because we started saying, okay, we're going to create a show. It's a talk show. Yay, guys, we've got a talk show. And it's for female entrepreneurs. And then um, we started really understanding what a podcast is and what the format is. And Mm. I had a conversation with one of my good friends, David Kabuka, who is has a podcast with Trevor Noah. And he was saying to me he had to sign a contract now that allowed them to film every single podcast because things had shifted and changed. And I was like, oh, really? So now that is the new sort of framework. And in the last two weeks, I've been interviewed on two different podcasts and it's mm -hmm. literally in studio like we are sitting today um, and and recorded and then obviously there's the sound as well and I think that was a major shift for us from season one to season two because season one was in front of a live studio audience which was amazing it was, it was so <laughs> great but from a sound quality perspective and from a focus perspective, it was a lot sort of more scattered, I suppose, and, mm. and bigger. Whereas now we're in studio, as you can see, and, um, and it is a lot more focused. Was there something you wanted to add to that? I think the, the underlying principle of why we're talking about 
the what a podcast really is now is that it can be many different things sure. and a key learning for me and that we are feeding into season two has been to create for the channel that we're making it for yeah so so let's get to that but not everyone probably did tune in for season one so mm. as a very quick recap we hosted six live events mm -hmm. they were incredible at a place called Boca creative studio in seapoint in cape town we had around 40 to 50 attendees of each event and it was a live studio so we did three interviews with a different woman or man and then we recorded that put it on youtube and then cut it into shorts or, or our snippets or trailers for instagram I don't think we put it on TikTok, but we will be no, this season. <laughs> and we also recorded um, international interviews mm. during the day in the same format that we during season two. So we set up a studio format within the Boca Creative Studio, and then we had a Zoom call with somebody else somewhere else in the world. So mm. that was the one similarity, I guess, <laughs> that we're taking with us. So I think let's start with the challenges before the successes mm. from season one, because probably a lot of you are tuned in because you're thinking about starting a podcast or you have one and you're just not getting the traction that you want. So I think one of the challenges that I'll touch on is actually that reach. Um, mm -hmm. And this is why we've, we're doing things differently in season two. We had the most incredible feedback from the live events. And Susanna, you and I are very biased. We're both <laughs> quite extroverted. And so an excuse to get together with the community, oh, we're so going good. to do it. It was so good. <laughs> um, but what, what that meant is that we were posting a recording of an event on YouTube, mm. not a video that was built for YouTube and for the algorithm that YouTube uses to reach the best and the right people for us being female entrepreneurs. Similarly, we were just taking a snippet from the video and putting it on Instagram and not necessarily getting the reach for that that we were on other reels that were designed as reels for that channel, for the algorithm. And so um, I would say that was one of the key challenges because you mm. know, as much as we loved the in-person, our goal is to reach as many people with the content that we're creating as possible to have the impact. And that approach of content, I guess, distribution was not delivering that for us to the scale that we knew we could. A hundred percent. I mean, one of the things that, that we loved about the live events was having the woman there and the sense of community that it created and how empowered they all felt there live but it wasn't translating as effectively as we wanted it to translate onto the online space. And being a recovering perfectionist, anyone else out there? Um, being a Are recovering, you recovering <laughs> I am, Lauren, I am. <laughs> being a recovering perfectionist um, and being in production, coming from a film background where, and I'm a creative director as well, where visuals are so important, sound is so important, production value to me is so important. I drive Lauren nuts sometimes with it. Um, but for me, it was really challenging because we were not in a controlled environment, um, which made the sound not great and, um, and some things quite challenging from a production point of view, mm. which now being in a studio where I mean, I'm holding a mic in my hand and you can hear me speaking so clearly. <laughs> it's so nice because I know that we're going to deliver a product that is really wonderful to listen to. Stick in your podcast, pod, um, AirPods or whatever they are and actually listen to us and it's clear and it's not too loud and it's not um, distracting, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And the production value is so much higher. But then also the content right so going back to the content we created this so out of love and enthusiasm mm -hmm. i think that we were um, almost like little golden retriever puppies at one <laughs> stage um you know bounding in and just celebrating women and having so much fun with it but in season two one of the things that we are doing is being so much more focused on getting the right pieces of information that are usable for our community. So we're hoping that this is usable for you when you, if you are thinking of creating a podcast, like really thinking about these things, what are the pieces of information that are really usable and translatable into action for our community rather than just having a, a wonderful conversation, which is lovely as well. <laughs> but we are targeting female entrepreneurs and we have to think about that. We have to think about our target market. 
And just building on that, I think it was the right format for the offline event where yes. people are open to a more leisurely storytelling conversation. Mm. I'll touch on one more challenge and then let's go to our wins. Okay. <laughs> One more challenge was time management. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly me speaking to this, I lived in a different city from where we hosted the event. And so not only does a month come around very quickly, <laughs> but also I had to factor in flying to another city, staying there, not necessarily having everything that I needed, flying back. And actually the time that that took for the return we got, when you do look at it from a metrics perspective, mm -hmm. It wasn't, we weren't really getting the ROI that I was personally hoping for. That neither of us were. I mean, we yeah. had we had set up actually, um, you know, a kind of a goal, remember, at mm. the beginning. And, and although we didn't, I do still feel like the season was a win in lots of ways. But from an ROI, ROI perspective, it wasn't. You yes. know, we didn't get to where we wanted to be. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a win you would want to share? What was your favorite moment from season one before we go into our tips? Oh my gosh, I had so many favorite moments, <laughs> but I think they were live moments. You know, it was women coming up to us and saying, I met my business partner here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I found a collaborator and it's because you guys encouraged us to connect with each other because during the live events, one of there were two things that I loved doing was the Oprah moments, like, you get it, you get it, you get it. I mean, That's I love doing fun. that. <laughs> and then I also really loved the authentic connection competitions where, mm. you know, women would swap business cards and the woman with the most authentic connections at the end of the day would win a prize. And so many beautiful relationships mm. came out of running that little competition at our live events, which for me, felt so good because literally it was our sixth show and two ladies came up to me and they said, we met on the first night. Wow, I and, didn't know this. And, and we're working together and we're so happy because it was because you made us swap numbers. Oh. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yay. <laughs> but that really is why we do yeah. what we do. But how do we do that at scale, I yeah. guess, is a question we were left with after season one. So... Let's get into... What was yours? Oh, oh mine? Yeah. <laughs> mine is actually also just about the live. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say our karaoke night. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was definitely a personal win. But Check out the highlights in my reels. <laughs> <laughs> I think after coming, coming out of COVID, it was quite a personal one, which was just mm. actually being with the people that we've been serving. You know, I met some of our future females membership members for the first time physically mm. after meeting them online every single week for two and a half years. I knew their businesses. I knew their family struggles and had never met them. And yeah. cheersing a champagne in person is so much more So fun. good. Yeah. Beatrice arriving. Oh, our I Namibian mean, oh ambassador driving all the way down. I'm going to miss mistake how far it is, but I'm going to say it's 20 hours drive. Like that commitment was just amazing. So beautiful. Yeah. And it was her husband who mm -hmm. facilitated that. It was just so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So now looking at season two, mm. doing things better. Yes. Um, I think the first thing that became very apparent is the financial side 100%. of growing a podcast successfully. So for any of you that run events, ticket sales, you're lucky if it covers, you know, the costs of putting on your event and marketing. And that's okay if that's your objective, but ours mm -hmm. is to reach millions of people. So we, and also with a podcast, you already need a good reach to be able to get uh, sustainable enough advertising revenue. So what we did was go out and look for mission aligned sponsors. We specifically wanted one headline sponsor who could really help us, you know, make sure that the production quality was amazing and also invest in that early reach on the different channels. So we were lucky is the wrong word, but our last event of season one, we were happy to be able to partner with a company called Zoho. Mm. Uh, they are a cloud based. Essentially, they offer a whole suite of different apps for entrepreneurs, everything you could need from websites to workforce tools to automations. And they sponsored our last event. The whole team came along, loved the experience, and agreed to come on for season two. And they're so great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they really are. What a lovely company to, mm. to work with and really aligned in terms of mission as well. Exactly. Just empowering entrepreneurs in such a beautiful way. So I would say we actually said let's not do a season two until we have a financial mm. sponsor because after going through season one and essentially being out of pocket, we knew that 
that's what it would take. So I would say that is a like a non-negotiable for anyone who's really seriously wanting to invest in this. Yeah, and actually, as you said that, um, it's so true, Lauren. Like we said, okay, until we get a sponsor on board, we're not doing season two. Mm. And they came on on our last <laughs> one, right? Yeah. Which just rolled us over into Space. season two. So <laughs> it's just meant to be. Um, but I do think that that is that is a big one. The other the other really great thing that we've done for season two that I think is going to help with the ROI but also the production quality is getting a studio and shooting a whole lot of interviews in one day in one go. So for me it's like a bittersweet because it's so great. I mean I've already done two interviews today, Lauren's already done two interviews today. It's so much fun. Um, I do miss the live so we have a quarterly a quarterly live event because mm -hmm. those are also just still great connection points in a completely different way but from a production point of view from a cost point of view from an effectiveness point of view and also from a structure point of view because i think mm -hmm. we were i mean we were just figuring things out but we were a little bit scattered compared to where we are now mm. um, in season one. It really helps. You can plan ahead. You can get all of your interviews lined up and you can literally just shoot one after another. One thing I do want to say to everybody who is thinking of doing this is please speak to whoever your technical team is, whoever is shooting <laughs> it, like your camera person, your sound person. Ask them what they can cope with because it can also be overwhelming. It takes time to download footage, to upload footage, to save footage, to make sure that you've actually captured everything correctly. So please don't leave like five, 10 minute breaks, 15 minute breaks be between every single interview. She's speaking to me right now. No, I already had this discussion with you, <laughs> yeah. but I thought it was a valid point for anybody who is trying because, so I, for instance, when I told Priya, um, who is shooting for us, she was like, oh my goodness. I was like, don't worry. I'm gonna get you enough breaks, it's gonna be okay. Like you wanna make sure your team feels looked after as well and not put excess pressure on them. Once you get into the role of things and once you've done it a few times, it's much easier and you'll get through things a lot quicker. But production takes time. It takes time to set up. Mm. Um, it takes time to dump footage. It takes time, so please don't rush your per production <laughs> team. I think that leads on to the third thing that we we sat down and really changed for season two, and that was team. Mm -hmm. So, of course, at Future Females, we're lucky. We have a really passionate, mission-aligned team, but it was no one's role to run the Future Females show. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that fell, of course, on us or even onto people who didn't have capacity for it without necessarily agreeing. And um, and that came through and having to do things last minute and perhaps not up Absolutely. to the well, the standard was very good, to be honest, because no one would ever put out something that's not. But mm. the team definitely felt it. So I would say consider who you need in your team before you're starting. One of the things we've done this time is appoint a program manager. So we've got the lovely Carmen coming behind the scenes, running the show, who is looking after the events, our sponsors, the reporting, looking after our speakers, asking them what is going to make you show up best? What can we ask you? And you, you've always mentioned this question. Mm. What question can we ask you to show you in the best light? Someone who is managing that administration for you behind the scenes because it's a lot, particularly if you are going to time bound quarterly, like <laughs> Susanna was just saying, and we are now. And things move around, right? You've mm. got a perfect schedule next minute one person wants to move to the morning so I think finding someone who can help you obviously if you have a financial sponsor that's great because that can cover the expense of that person when I did my first podcast six years ago I had a volunteer I had someone who was actually studying to become a producer and I positioned it to them as their work experience so mm -hmm. even if you don't necessarily have the finances Bring on board a team who's going to support you in achieving, you know, what it is you're working towards. A hundred percent. And then just have frameworks in place, you know, have your set email with all of the questions that you know you need to ask the people you're going to interview so that you can literally cut and paste and change what needs to be done. Like those sorts of things are just going to speed up a whole lot of your time. Mm. Yeah. So our fourth tip is around tailoring your content to your audience, which mm. you did start speaking about before. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, as I said before, we love having a good chin wag um, <laughs> conversation. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but the reality is that female entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, 
don't have a lot of time. So you want to get to the point. You want to get to the actionable steps, like what can we take out of this? What can we use? And let's keep moving. And and so that's one of the things that we've shifted in terms of focus mm -hmm. for season two, is we really want to give people actionable steps that they're getting straight away. So things like allowing your guests to introduce themselves is so lovely, but frame it for them. <laughs> so introduce them and then say to them before you go on air, say, please, can you introduce yourself? But it's literally just a highlight reel. It's very, very quick. You've got mm -hmm. 60 seconds because otherwise, like an elevator pitch, I literally say to them, it's like an elevator pitch. Otherwise, people, it's so nice getting celebrated. Yes. And and one <laughs> of the things that we do well, and I really believe that, is celebrate women, you know, and well, And people. we love everyone's stories. And we stories. love it so much. <laughs> and so when they sit down, we're like, oh, yes. And then what happened? And then what happened? Which is fantastic but you can actually just google mm. that stuff right and if you're if you're watching a podcast on how to five tips for growing a successful yes. podcast you don't want to hear what they did in primary school no <laughs> although now i'm very curious about your primary school <laughs> um absolutely but it's just a different type of podcast as well mm. so i think that's the important thing is we're basing the content on future females community, right? Mm. There are different types of podcasts. There are certain podcasts that are all about the story. Like, yeah. where did you come from? What is your journey? And that's beautiful too. But decide who your podcast is aimed at and then create the content according to what they need, not just, oh, this is a lovely time. <laughs> it is yeah. a lovely time. <laughs> and then our, our last tip, or I guess big decision factor leading into season two was, what is our primary channel going to be? Mm. And how can we build this for that channel? What we did last season was, uh, as you've heard, record the event and then put it on YouTube. And yes, we got some good views on YouTube, but it was very up and down. And frankly, we weren't optimizing anything for YouTube. We were just putting the recordings on there and hoping that it was going to gain traction. So our primary focus for now, what we're recording in this studio, is creating a video that is tailored for YouTube mm -hmm. from the length, from the day that you post on. You know, our, our research for our audience is never post on a Friday. And because or we, a Saturday or a or Sunday. A Saturday. <laughs> and because we have such a global audience as well, getting really niche on the time zone we want to appeal mm -hmm. to most, if to the heading that we use, to the keywords that we're including in the caption, actually building it for YouTube, and then instead of just taking a snippet and putting it on TikTok and Reels, actually use the raw footage to develop a TikTok. Maybe it's exactly these, the five tips cut up rather than just a snippet of one. So really creating for the channel that you're sharing it on organically. Absolutely. And decide because it doesn't have to be one channel, but mm -hmm. pick a main channel and then decide which other channels are going to be your channels. Because for instance, we just found out that Spotify um, you mm. can actually switch between video and audio on Spotify now. Because podcasts are recorded as video and as audio, you can actually bounce between the two, which amazing. Isn't that fantastic? It's fantastic. <laughs> but know that and then create the content accordingly. Um, yeah, absolutely. So to wrap this up, they were our five key points um, in terms of us being able to now grow an even more successful podcast. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to stay tuned as we release the episodes to see how they play out. Susanna, what is one thing you're most looking forward to in season two? In season two, I, re I really want to see our reach just grow in the way that we've envisioned it growing. You know, I want to see women feeling truly empowered by the content mm. that we are creating. So in terms of the feedback, um, although we're not getting as much live feedback as we were getting before, I hope to get, my hope, my dream is to get feedback from on on YouTube saying, hey, this changed my business, you know, this yeah. this helped me achieve my dream in this way. Like for me, those are the things that keep me going. Mm. Yeah. I think one for me, because obviously when we were recording the event, we were quite limited to which speakers are in Cape Town on the mm. night that we're recording and willing to come all the way to Seapoint where we were hosting it. That really uh, limited the pool of speakers available to us. Whereas now doing it in studio, we can we can showcase the whole world, yeah. which we will because Future Females is in 56 cities. So we want to make sure that we're being representative, 
but also that we are bringing the absolute best person to speak on a topic to you. So that's what I'm particularly excited about is really getting more breadth of speakers. Mm. I mean, we were lucky enough in season one, you'll see that we interviewed people in Australia, mm. we interviewed people from England, we interviewed people in India, like there were, there were a whole lot of different people, but because we only did one international interview per, yeah. per month, the majority of them had to be in Cape Town. So I'm also very excited. I'm also excited about the um, the amazing level of entrepreneurs that I think that yeah. are going to be accessible now as well. So yeah, <laughs> very exciting. Absolutely. So yeah. I think let's wrap think it up it. there. Yeah. I hope that this has been helpful. We will definitely share our learnings again at the end of season two and probably throughout. Absolutely. Um, and if <laughs> and if you've got somebody that as an entrepreneur that you really look up to, that you think is phenomenal, please write to us, get in touch and let us know in the comments below which of these tips resonated with you the most, what helped you the most. Please, your feedback really, I mean, it sends my heart into pitter pit pit patters of joy. <laughs> It makes it all worthwhile. So please give us your feedback. Oh, and thank you for tuning in. This has been the Future Female Show. And we look forward to seeing you or at least having you viewing further episodes. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>